In today's video, I'm going to be doing something that's very different than the regular content that I usually make. I'm not really the type of person to make evergreen content. I don't really talk about, you know, top devil fruits. I don't really talk about the 10 quirkiest characters in One Piece. Like, that's just not me. But one thing I do like to talk about is the greatness that One Piece brings to anime and manga. With that being said, we are going to explore Wano and just how good this arc is. The good, the bad, the ugly. No matter how you shake it though, Wano has been an amazing arc in the anime and in the manga. And I truly, truly believe that this could be one of the greatest arcs to ever touch One Piece. Plot, world building, themes, community influence, and how it'll overall affect the story of One Piece. What's interesting about Wano is how it's broken down into different acts. Usually being based off of Japanese culture, I believe that Oda heavily based this off of a Kabuki playstyle. In these Kabuki playstyles, there are three, four, and five act plays. One of the misconceptions that a lot of people in the fandom have is that because it is a Kabuki playstyle, it has to have five acts. This is something that had a chokehold on our community for a while, but there are three, four, and five act plays as well, which means that this could very much end in act three, or perhaps the climax ends in act three, which leads into the falling action in Act 4, which will close out the entirety of the arc. However you slice it though, I believe what's really cool about this arc in particular, and something that Oda likes to do a lot of times with One Piece, is he correlates it to something within Japanese culture, and having the Kabuki playstyle be so akin to the themes in this arc makes it so much more interesting. And that brings up our first category that I want to touch on, the themes. One of the themes that is huge in Wano is identity. The way that Oda has been using his characters to push this identity theme is amazing. Let's talk about Kanjiro first, because he is very much the depiction of this Kabuki playstyle, in my opinion. Having Kanjiro's character design being that of the most prevalent caricatures that are in the Kabuki play, having the white makeup, the wardrobe, and the red hair that they normally would wear. What's interesting about him in correlation to the identity theme, this entire time he was acting, he was actually a traitor and working with Orochi. Now this is awesome that correlates well to the themes of identity because he was literally playing a character. This entire time he was trying to get revenge for his family, which played up on the identity themes of him pretending to be someone that was helping the scabbards when the entire time he had ulterior motives. This is also played well with Denjiro. We see that he acts like Kiroshiro and we see Hiori acting like Komurasaki. And in another cool way, Oda shows this identity theme again, and the scene where Kiroshiro attacks Hiori and bursts the blood bag. Again, acting. Two characters acting. This theme of identity. But yes, we touched on the acting portion that shows this identity theme, but what about other character moments? Well, I'm glad that you guys brought this up, because this happens with Momonosuke and Yamato as well. But they aren't acting, they're trying to find themselves. Momonosuke lives within the shadow of his father, Odin. There's an awesome scene during Udon Prison in which he's contemplating this and he's talking to himself and asking, are these people worshipping me and following me because I am going to be next up as Shogun because I am Momonosuke, or are they following me because I am in the shadow of Odin? This is something that's very prevalent. Once again, this theme of identity where Momonosuke is trying to find out who he is as a person. Because yes, he knows that he's Momonosuke, but is he trying to be his own man or is he trying to live up to this shadow that is his father? Yamato, another person, trying to be Odin because Yamato has not found herself. She does not know who she is as a person and therefore she imitates somebody that she looks up to heavily in that boiling pot moment where she sees Odin holding up the scabbards and being this all some leader she decides that day that she wants to be him and it's not because she doesn't love who she is as a person it's because she hasn't found herself again oda pushing this awesome theme of identity another character that i feel like now is pushing this identity theme heavily is kaido when he looks at luffy and he says you couldn't be joy boy either we finally have a moment in which we see some slight motivation in kaido because that implies that he tried to be joy boy or he thought that he might be Joy Boy and he failed. Again, trying to find himself. Another way that Oda is pushing this theme of identity. It's a very beautiful thing that's widespread throughout Wano. And I think Oda is doing an awesome job of implementing this in all of these different characters. Even with Zoro and Sanji. 
Like down to the straw hats this is being pushed. Zoro trying to find out who he is. Why does he look like Ryuma? Why does he look like Ushimaru? Does he have any ties to the Shimotsuki clan? Sanji trying to find himself. Is he going to be a monster and turn into his brothers or is he going to be his own man? Oda is doing such a great job with the writing and correlating the character writing into the themes. Speaking of character writing, let's move on to the next category, the characters. The characters in Wano are beautiful. A lot of people have complaints about Act 1 of Wano and especially Act 2 of Wano saying that it's too slow. But I feel like the introduction into some of these newer characters via the Scabbards, people like Tama, people like Yasui, Hiogoro, all of these awesome people we get introduced to means something to the story. That's the thing that I love about One Piece. Character writing and world building are my favorite aspects because Oda does such a good job at using the characters as moving pieces to make the story go along. And although you feel like he's doing this at a slow pace, it doesn't matter because he is moving the story along. I understand that because Toei adapts one-to-one -one chapters and episodes, a lot of times there's a lot of recap and fluff. I get that. However, they are doing a great job at implementing the newer characters and adapting and fleshing out moments in the manga that we haven't got to see all the way through. And that's something I'm going to touch on a little bit later. I really, really enjoy the character aspect of Wano because Oda is doing a great job at having these characters interact well. There are a lot of cool moments, especially during the Udon prison portion and in the raid portion, where we have really cool interactions with characters that we probably wouldn't expect to talk to each other, but they are, and it's leading to great moments. For instance, Luffy and Kid interacting in Udon. Awesome. Seeing that rivalry, seeing them do this prison work together, it's something simple, but it's fun, it's entertaining. Seeing Luffy learn with Hyogoro, seeing Luffy have his interaction with one of these elders like this is giving me very much feels of like a Master Roshi or a Jiraiya, seeing this sensei type moment. And Luffy doesn't have this often, but when he does, it is very interesting to see. Or seeing Big Mom and Queen interact, again, a very funny, you know, what led to a really awesome fight and moment but it was cool seeing them interact going into the raid seeing characters like alti and page one and meet up with luffy they're interacting seeing characters like apu interact with luffy and zoro like characters that we might not normally see interact with each other but we're seeing it here firsthand in an intense moment like a raid like this mission is happening while these characters are discussing with each other and i really do like it it's very entertaining seeing two characters with different like styles clashing leads to good writing moments and leads to entertaining moments and no, it's not perfect. There are things that could seem annoying and I will touch on those as well. However, I believe that the character writing is very good. I really like these characters. Do I wish some of them were fleshed out more? Yes, I have to be honest. But the character interactions are what I'm here for and I love those. So we talked a little bit about the characters in a positive light, but what about plot? Now, the plot is something that is very important. The plot is what drives the story. It is the story itself. Everything that's happening, the rise in action, the climax, the falling action, all of these moments are within the plot and they are the bread and butter of what makes a story a story. How does the plot of Wano compare to some of the other great arcs? like Sabaody, and Islabi, Water 7, Marineford. Although I don't have Wano over these arcs in particular, I do believe it deserves to be in the conversation with them. Specifically with how Wano was going in the manga and how I think that it has potential to end, I believe once it's said and done, it might be amongst some of the better arcs. The plot in Act 1 really was a lot of build-up. We got reintroduction into the Straw Hats, what they've been doing with, you know, their disguises and jobs that they have been doing, while Luffy and the others were in whole cake handling business. We get a lot of cool interactions with Zoro and some of the samurai. We get a very cool fight with Hawkins, which is actually super fleshed out in the anime. Seeing Zoro fight the straw man was beautiful. It was animated well. It was great. I loved it. And it ends with that awesome Curry interaction. They're in Curry and Luffy versus Kaido happens. Their first bout where it looks like Kaido has seemingly killed all of the straw hats, which leads to Luffy being very angry and attacking him. Toei did a spectacular job with this animation. They took those manga panels, which honestly was only a few pages, and it was just Kaido pretty much getting hit once and then blitzing Luffy, and they turned it into an entire bout. This is something that they have done a spectacular job with with the manga they are adapting these one to two page fights and turning them into like three to five minute bouts 
giving us the people watching and consuming the anime something that is much needed and that is good fights and anime has to have fleshed out fights and Oda doesn't take the time to draw them because he has to write so much within his chapters he doesn't have a ton of time to just draw out fights so Toei is giving us that and in this awesome climax of Act 1, we get to see Luffy getting arrested, going to Udon, which leads us into Act 2, where we get the whole Udon prison situation. Now, again, this was pretty slow, but I like the Udon prison stuff. A lot of people don't like it. I enjoyed it. I like to see Luffy train. I like to see the fleshed out fights with people like Luffy and Batman, which I thought was hilarious. They flesh out this Batman fight. They even give this guy hockey, which <laughs> it's just funny. And hockey is a very important part of the power system, specifically in this arc. We learn about Rio and Advanced Conquerors within this arc, which is crazy to think about. But Luffy learns about Rio in his training with Hyogoro. We get to see Luffy use his future sight better. We're learning a lot of things about strength and how Luffy is going to overcome Kaido. We also got the amazing Kamazo and Zoro fight, which is one of the best animated moments that I've seen in One Piece, period. Outside of movies, of course. But in this arc, we get that crazy fight, which led to us understanding that when the ground breaks up into cubes, it's getting real. Like, this is something that we know to be true now. And then Act 3 has honestly just been peak to me. Act 3 has literally had some of the best chapters in all of One Piece, in my opinion. For instance, chapter 1009, the Ocean Sovereignty moment. Chapter 1010, the Conqueror's moment with Zoro and Luffy. Chapter 1000 with the Red Rock. Sanji's fight with Queen, Zoro's fight with King, Marco versus King and Queen. All of these awesome chapters have happened within the last, I'd say, 30 to 40 chapters of One Piece. These are like peak chapters within One Piece. Act 3 is bringing the heat with the plot. I cannot wait to see how Wano ends. It is so crazy to think about. Speaking of crazy to think about, how has One Piece done with community aspects? I believe that One Piece has if not the best, one of the best communities in general. Yes, there's a lot of toxicity, but that just comes with very popular series. All popular series have toxic fan bases. It's just that One Piece is so globally popular that there's so much more of it. But the good parts of the community are amazing. Great conversations and great interactions and just discussions with fans. It's, it's awesome. But what about Wano specifically? We have been trending over and over and over and over again. Wano is on track to be one of the most popular arcs in One Piece, if it's not already the most popular so far. I have not seen this much love for a series in a long time. The amount that we trend from chapter to chapter episode to episode it's literally mind-boggling i haven't seen anything like it and the last thing i want to talk about before i do talk about some critiques is how is this going to change the story overall for one piece i believe that wano is going to change the story tremendously because it's leading into the final stretch of the story the new generation versus the yanko was happening right in front of us to the point where the cp0 was consistently making comments about it and how it will change the world if the new generation wins if two yanko are defeated Defeated here, the entire system and how people look at it in the One Piece world will change. There will either be no more Yonko or there will be people from the new generation replacing the Yonkos that have been defeated. This is a huge, huge change to what we already expect, not just us as the viewers, but the people inside the One Piece world. Because remember, One Piece is a moving world. Everything that happens has a reaction. Everything that these characters were watching do changes things on the outside world. This is going to change how the Marines interact with pirates, how the world government views these pirates, and it's going to change a lot when it comes to territory. Because once these Yonkos fall, their territory is up for grab. Remember what happened when Whitebeard died. Blackbeard had to go and claim all that territory, which led to a payback war with Blackbeard and Mihawk and the rest of the Whitebeard remnants. This same thing could happen if Big Mom and Kaido fall. All of their territory is up for grabs. Who's going to claim what? What's going to lead to what? This is what's going to change the story and start the end of One Piece. This is going to lead directly into Laugh Tale and getting the One Piece, which is going to cause the great final war that Whitebeard talked about at Marineford. Wano is going to have so much influence on One Piece. It's not even close. I think that this arc is probably one of the most influential arcs in the story. Now that I've talked about Wano and everything that I feel about its arc so far and how good it is, I want to talk about some critiques that I see. 
The first critique I kind of talked about a little bit, and that is the pacing issues. Again, I don't want to blame this on Toei, but if you're anime only, the pacing is just going to be like this because of how they adapt to the story. That's not really Wano's fault. It's been like this throughout the entirety of One Piece. It's just poorly paced because they're not adapting multiple chapters into one episode. They're trying to adapt like half a chapter and sometimes one chapter to one episode. Because of this, they have to add a lot of fluff and there's often long recaps. This is just how Toei does things and it's something you're going to have to deal with, unfortunately, unless you read the manga. Now, for manga readers who think that, okay, I'm still reading the manga and I feel like Act 1 and 2 were slow. You have to understand when you have arcs this large, and specifically with Wano being the largest arc in One Piece, you're going to have a lot of buildup. Act 1 and 2 were legitimate build-up acts. These acts all were build-up that would culminate in the climax act of Act 3 being the raid and the fulfillment of the mission that the Scabbards are on with the Straw Hat Alliance. So yes, it is slow, but it's meant to be that way because Oda is trying to create a story and then have the payoff be the raid. That's the whole point. We go into the Odin flashback, which I haven't mentioned yet because I wanted to save it for this part, but that is a big thing that people had complaints about. The Odin flashback was good, but it was too slow and it wasn't just about Odin. But you got to understand this flashback was not just for Odin. Number one, this was to talk about all of the scabbards, try to flesh their characters out, make us care for them, but also explain how Odin became who he was. Odin traveling with Roger and Whitebeard and getting to go to Laugh Tale and see the One Piece, all of that is important for his character. It's not just random things that they threw in for hype value. No, these things are important. So although it was slow, it's important to build up rapport with characters and to have build up for the acts. So when you get to the payoff, you already have emotional connections with these characters, with the pain that they're going through in mind. All of this was necessary to me. No, I'm not excusing it if you didn't like it. You have all the right in the world to not like something. I'm just trying to give you my mindset on it so maybe yours could change on it being slower. Another critique that I see often is that some of the important characters aren't utilized enough, like the Scabbards, and they also feel like Kaido should be fleshed out more as well. I see that a ton. This is a critique that I do agree with, but I'm not 100% sold on it being like my end-all be-all critique yet because Wano still isn't over. The Scabbards though, I do believe that they could have been utilized more. I really, really, really wish that we got a little bit more with them. Yes, in the Odin flashback, we got some characterization, but I would have loved to see some of the build up pay off. For example, Kawamatsu was built up so much and I feel like he kind of fell flat for me. So I do agree with this critique in a way. Not 100% agree, but I agree with the take a little bit. Another critique I see is that the fights could have been handled better. A lot of people don't like the Topi Ropo fights, but when I break them down, I actually enjoyed them. I love the Black Maria and Robin fights. The Sasaki and the Frankie fight was silly, but it's Frankie. Of course, he's going to fight a quirky person. Y'all remember the Senior Pink fight? That is kind of how it was. Senior Pink was a quirky character. That's kind of how Frankie's fights go. So although it was, you know, weird seeing the whole helicopter zone, it was a cool fight and it was an actual Frankie fight. This is just how he fights. The Jinbei and Who's Who fight was amazing, and we got great lore in that fight. And the Aussie and Page 1 fights had that awesome Nami moment, and then it ended with a Conqueror's Coding Punch from Big Mom into a Zeus attack? That's actually pretty cool if you think about it. I actually enjoyed the Topi Ropo fights, so I'm not really in agreement with that take at all. Kaido being fleshed out more is the last like take I want to talk about. I don't want to really go into that because I believe we're still getting a Kaido backstory. I'm still in belief that that is something that's going to come within this arc very soon, so of course I don't agree with it. All in all though, I do believe that Wano is going to end up one of the greatest arcs in One Piece. It may not be better than, you know, the four super Mount Rushmore awesome arcs that people talk about, but I do believe that it has possibility to be within the top five greatest arcs in One Piece and at minimum top 10. This arc is very long, yes, and it does have a lot of buildup, but it has some of the most awesome character interactions I've seen, a lot of lore. It's going to change the story of One Piece so much because it is so influential with everything going on. And it has introduced so many new characters and also new techniques that I can't help but think that this arc is super important for the story. Wano, honestly, in a nutshell, is a great arc. And I can't wait to see it end and see how it goes down in history. Thank you for watching.